Okay, everybody, um, so I'm going to try and reproduce. I've been having a sound issue with this amp, kind of intermittent. Um, I don't know if I can get it for you, but we'll find out. But it basically, it's been kind of occasionally just having some heavy distorted kind of clicks and pops every once in a while while playing. I think it's a bad ground somewhere. I'm going to try and troubleshoot it, but this is my first ever amp I built. It's a Vox AC30. We'll see if I can get it to make some of the noises that I've been having. So let's give it a try, see if we can get it to reproduce. If not, I'll probably just show you the testing and fixing process anyway and see if I can get it better. I'm also, if you can hear, there's a decent amount of hum right now as well. Now the volumes are up to about 7 or 8 out of 10 uh, on both of them. I've got the jumper between the normal and regular channels, but uh, one of the other things that I should probably experiment with here in a second is removing the jumpering and just testing one kind of input at a time to see if one of them is particularly noisy as well. But we'll uh, kind of go through that here in a second. So here let me try and reproduce the sound. Of course it's not going to reproduce. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do though, like I said, I'm getting crackling and popping. Let's actually try, put this on standby for a minute. I'm going to unjump the channels so that I'm no longer hooked into uh, the normal channel. And then we'll just uh, bring this back up. I think the noise is a little quieter on this channel, but not a ton. Okay, let's try the other input jack. Oh yeah, there we go. So there's actually a lot more noise, so that means that my second input jack on that bright channel has got some, some noise to it. So that could also, I don't know, that's a couple things. Could be the input jack itself is not getting a good closed connection on it, but oh, my audio stopped working. Okay, well, uh, at any rate, you can probably hear that pretty well on the mic. Um, I'm having issues with my audio recording software. It keeps on cutting out on me. Um, and then, uh, let's try the normal channel. It's a little hummy too. And then we're coming over here. So um, I won't go into too much more detail because I can't record the audio over because it's cut out on me again. But you're probably hearing the noise in the generally in the room through the uh, microphone from the camera. But it definitely has a lot of noise in that one input right here. This bottom one, that's pretty loud. So I have to troubleshoot that. But I also have just the general issue that uh, for some reason at certain times it starts crackling, which I think is also potentially a grounding issue also. All right, hello everybody. So here's the inside. Um, you'll notice uh, some of the things about this that could be potentially done better is the fact that I was still new at this and have a lot of like loose wires laying all over the place. I'll try and probably kind of kind of pull them to a little bit, you know, per grouping together uh, and clean this up a little as I go. The other major issue here as well, though, is that, um, as you kind of were, were hearing, there seems to be some poor grounding problems here on this area, related to at least some of these. So I'm going to plug in jacks and play with that. But also, uh, it's also possible one of these potentiometers isn't grounding out well. What I'll, I'll show you is we're going to tap into some of these areas with this chopstick, wooden chopstick, make sure it's wooden or some that, something that you're sure is non-conductive, because if you're probing with a, a metal bit and you touch things together, you can short things out and potentially cook things or yourself. So always be careful and be safe with these things. The other thing I'm going to make sure I do quickly is I'm going to check voltages. 
with my multimeter to make sure that I am not going to shock myself uh, by probing this amp. So the first thing I want to do is connect it to a good ground right here. And then I'm going to get this and I'm going to uh, bring this up hopefully so you can see it a little bit. We'll put this on DC volts. And I'm going to try and test the positive leads of my uh, capacitors. They're at 9 volts. That one's at also at 9 volts. So we're at about 9 volts. So what I want to do is I'm going to want to actually discharge that. So the way I'll discharge that is by getting a resistor that I have connected to a couple of leads and then touch things together. So we'll show you that in a second. This is a technique that you probably have seen on many other videos before. Uh, but uh, we'll want to make sure that you can see. Okay, so now you can see the multimeter. Uh, I, what I'll do is I'm going to clamp. I've got a clamp tip. I will clamp onto one of the leads for the uh, thing. And if you notice, again, I'm trying to be very careful. Even though it's, I know it's only 9 volts, it's the same procedure you should always do. One hand only allowed inside. It's clamped. You can see 9 volts. So what I'll do is I've got my, um, uh, if I can find it, I've got a resistor here that I can clip in series with a couple of clips to uh, make sure that we kind of get rid of any uh, charge there without it being, a, you know, the if you use straight wire it will work, but the the, sh the shock or the, sh the, the, the spark can startle and scare and it's better to be a little safer to slow it, discharge it slowly anyway. So we click one lead of this to the ground, the other end of this lead, so you can see there one, one lead is to ground like I've done, the other lead is to the other side of this large high watt resistor. And then I'm going to, and if you watch here, the second I clip to the power side of the rail, that should drop very quickly to z near zero. And that's the current draining through that resistor. We're now to sub one volt, 2.1. And I'll just let that sit for a few seconds. You see it'll drain to near zero pretty quickly. Once it's near zero, if I unplug it, there's another thing that's kind of cool. I can't remember the term, but the capacitor is actually still, will kind of recharge again and show a little bit higher voltage as soon as you remove this. Um, see that starting to climb back up again now? Uh, and that's that's actually a known uh, thing. Uh, you know, if somebody can tell me what that is in the comments before, that'd be great. I remember reading it somewhere. But it'll kind of slowly recharge. Of course, you can always just go back in again, clip onto that, and drain it back out again. But that's not a problem. I mean, at this level now, at, at sub one volt, there's nothing that's going to hurt me in there. So now I know I'm safe. I remove those clips to my resistor, get it out of my way, and now I'm ready to start working in the amp. So what I'm going to do is. Um, uh, now at this point you can safely you know desolder things, resolder things, etc. A couple other safety tips as well. If you're soldering and desoldering, make sure you um, remove the item that you've soldered in or desoldered with the power unplugged as well, because you can create a short circuit through the actual soldering iron as well, because it's earth uh, referenced and that could be very dangerous. A couple other general things about this build that you can probably see uh, is that. Uh, my lines here on this metal cut were very ugly and wavy. You can probably see that on multiple here. I did not know what I was doing with metal fabrication, and I still don't. I'm not a good metal fabricator. So I've gone since this, this was my first ever build, I've since gone to buying pre-cut chassis so they're not as ugly. A lot of my uh, holes were not even lined up. So there was a lot I learned in this build, and one of the biggest ones was that I am not a metal fabricator. And those guys that do that have a pretty, uh, pretty, a pretty amazing skill because making this stuff do what you want is not easy. So... Uh, but uh, another couple things, let me move this guy out of the way now, uh, now that we're safe to be in here. I'm not too worried about getting, you know, hands down in the guts. Um, the other major thing is that if you look at my heater wires, the heater wire windings here are not that great. But luckily, they're not yet, you know, they, they're coming into here, which is the first power tube. Uh, then from there out, my windings were okay. They were pretty decent. Uh, and uh, one of the things you'll kind of see I did here is I tried to kind of pull this heater winding away and down uh, or, but I also tried to kind of wrap it around but ultimately because I'm going from uh, each of these I think I might now that I'm thinking about it just kind of try and move these uh, but that could be inducing some of my hum is that the fact that these are so poorly kind of run between in fact I may now that I'm thinking about this part while I'm doing this I might just desolder a lot of these rewind some good wire better and run these heater wires this first one is okay I think because it's coming into the first input area here um, but the second I leave here, what I'm going to probably do is cut it straight to this edge and try and run along this edge and get myself a lot cleaner looking heater wire than that because that's just ugly looking. Of course, it was my first try. I didn't understand the importance of lead dress and getting these things in the right locations. Another thing I'd had a problem with is the grounding was very loud and ugly sounding initially. And I was playing around with my chopstick and I got this down to the chassis here. This is a, a kind of separate. Normally everything else kind of grounds to this main bus that I have across here. 
but I found that it doesn't ground as well, or doesn't sound as well as I'd like it to sound because of that hum, so I was able to kind of ground it to the chassis and that reduced a massive amount of the hum, but there's still a little here. Could be coming really from this input section. Again, like I said, I'll try and go through and tweak this. One of the things I'd done at the time is I just had some, some braided wire that I manually uh, stripped and hooked through here, but then I also tinned it so that it would have a little bit of a better solder connection, you know, so that it doesn't corrode. And I did similar things here. They're still kind of ugly looking. Most people will use a, a solid strand tinned wire for their grounding bus. Uh, and I've moved since to using some like 17 gauge electric fence wire that I use that just becomes my grounding bus and I connect to that. Uh, that just, the main reason is because it's so solid, it doesn't move. I anchor it in right here to the inputs usually and then kind of bring it around back behind here and, and over. So, uh, but ultimately I'm going to plug this in in a minute here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tap around in areas and you'll see me doing this to try and find locations where the noise comes and goes. So I'll obviously have to put, hook this up to an output speaker. One other mod I'm going to actually do today, because of the new speaker I've gotten is actually a, a 15 ohm, which is very close to 16. This is hooked up for 8, which is generally a safe and acceptable range, but you shouldn't run things like that longer term. So what I want to do is this transformer came with a 16 ohm winding as well as the 8 ohm. So what I'm going to do is hook these two windings up. I've got a little hole here. Uh, I'm going to put these two windings into a switch here that will toggle between 16 and 8 ohm, so that I will be able to choose to use either... That way I'm supporting the current speaker. The, the speakers I'm using now, though, are 8 ohms, so I'll leave it alone for now just to test and find these problems. So we'll go through all this, get done with it, and then go come back and review and let everybody get a chance to see what's going on and see what they think about the current you know, updates, how they look, how they sound. So there you have it. Everybody, uh, we'll, we'll give you some more updates here shortly. All right, so I'm going to record now. One of the things I want to show you is I'm now in these are the two normal inputs, and these are the two uh, um, top boost inputs. If I touch around in here, there's a slight increase in noise on the volume for the normal input, even though it's not plugged in. Hi, Mallory. Mallory's coming to say hi. It's the same with both of these. There's a little bit more noise there, but I'm almost wondering if that's heater noise because of the crummy heater running, which we're going to try and fix. But also, when I come to this one, it's a little bit more noise. And touching this pot makes it noticeably more so. That, to me, quite often indicates I need to solder those a little bit better, so I will try that. Also, the worst one, though, is that bottom one. Watch this really loud noise and touching that induces quite a bit more hum. I don't know if that's audible because it's a little bit lower hum. It's But ultimately there is, and, and as I turn the volume down, that disappears. So it is being induced somewhere at that volume. It's not going past it. So the volume attenuation makes that noise go away and as I bring it up it gets louder. So it's coming in somewhere in the input section itself or on the volume pot itself. So, um, and there's fairly, fairly limited going on here. This, this, these inputs just share this first preamp tube and they come down from there into the next stage, but you know, the tone controls, but if that's going away just by turning the volume down, in fact, if you turn the normal one all the way up without anything plugged in, there's like no noise, but this one definitely. So I need to try, um, I've tapped around the actual jack and I don't see any noise coming out of that. So my thoughts or suspicions are more that it's a problem in this volume pot. So I'm going to try and fix that. Um, uh, again, I think a lot of the hum is just being magnified anyway. There's a lot of hum coming from these heater wires. I'm getting a little feedback, sorry. From my guitar that's plugged in. So I'm going to try and redo the heater wiring and see if that will also reduce noise a little bit. And so we'll come back in a minute after I've resoldered these connections and I've redone the heater wiring and we'll see what that looks like. And hopefully at that point we'll have a much better looking and sounding amp. So we'll be back to you in a little bit. <laughs> 